I planted these pepper plants a month and two weeks ago. Everything was looking good with all the plants flourishing until yesterday. My pepper plant started to die. Irrigation is checked, fertilization is checked, and fungal diseases are checked. My plants are still dying helplessly. This is bacterial wilt disease and here is what you can do. For background, I acquired this piece of land two weeks ago for my new project. According to the previous owners, this land has had a history of vegetables flourishing and then suddenly dying. Eventually, they stopped growing tomatoes, peppers and garden eggs here. And in order to confirm the situation, I planted these pepper plants using all the best practices I know as an agronomist. As you can see the results, these plants are growing extremely well and flourishing. However, I noticed everything changed yesterday. I visited the garden in the morning and saw some plants wilting. As you can see, this land is well irrigated and not too dry. I have also fertilized the plants with some manure just last week and you can see the remains. And just since yesterday, between the time I visited the plant and now, six plants have already died. This is one of the terrible diseases in vegetable farming. Now, what is bacterial wilt disease? Bacterial wilt is a plant disease caused by several species of bacteria, most notably Raustonia. It affects crops like tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, and peppers, among others. This is how you can identify it is bacterial wilt disease affecting your plant. 1. There will be initial wilting of the leaves during the hottest parts of the day, followed by recovery at night. As the disease progresses, leaves stay wilted and may turn yellow and eventually brown. Infected plants often show no external sign of disease in the roots or stem, but when cut open, the stem discharges a milky bacterial slime. This bacteria is found in the soil, invades the plant through the roots, enter the vascular system and multiply rapidly, blocking the flow of water and nutrients and leading to wilting of the plant and eventually dying. This bacteria spreads easily everywhere because they get easily transported by running water to other places. So let's say your land is not infected but a neighbor's soil has the bacteria. When it rains, the running water can simply carry the bacteria to your land as well. They can also spread through infected plant debris. When you take the infected plant from your farm and simply put it somewhere else, you basically transported the bacteria to a new location. So what can you really do about bacterial wilt infection? Well, like HIV, bacterial wilt is unfortunately not treatable. However, there are some preventive and management measures you can take to stay free from this bacteria. When it comes to the spread through the soil and running water, you don't have any control over. But always make sure to prevent it when you have control over. First, don't buy or plant infected seeds. Seeds can be infected by the Raustonia bacteria and buying such seeds means buying the disease. Always make sure you buy your seeds from certified sources. And on that, I sell all sorts of high quality seeds that are certified and proven to give you high yields. You can pick up the numbers on the screen or in the description box for your orders. Once you always plant disease free seeds, the next step is to adopt healthy farming practices that reduce your risk of getting the bacteria in your garden. Practice crop rotation with crops like beans, corn, and cabbages. Avoid planting crops like potatoes, peppers, eggplants in the same area. But if you have planted already and your plants are infected and dying rapidly, here is what you can do. First, remove all the infected plants from your garden immediately. As I mentioned earlier, when you remove the infected plants, do not dispose them of in your farm. If possible, burn them and sanitize any tools you used on the infected plants before using them on your farm. That is the first step in making sure that the bacteria do not spread to more plants. Now, secondly, to the healthy plants, make the basis of the plant unfavorable as possible for the bacteria. There are several ways you can make the base of your plant highly unfavorable for the Rastonia bacteria. You can mix wood ash with water, allow it to stay overnight and sprinkle it around the basis of the plants. Wood ash will increase the alkalinity or the pH of the soil around your plant. As you know, the bacteria prefers acidic medium, so increasing the pH around the plant will deter the bacteria from operating around the plant. However, the plants also require acidic to neutral soil to thrive. Therefore, do not overuse wood ash. 
there are several other things you can use example garlic and neem leaves contain insecticide properties which will deter several insects and organisms including bacteria simply make an extraction of garlic or neem leaves and sprinkle around the base of the plant you can use one of these or try all together the goal is to make the base of your plants unfavorable as possible for the bacteria if you combine these with the right farming practices you can stay free from bacterial wilt and enjoy abundant harvest subscribe to the channel now if you've learned something new